Saturn and I have 82 moons from the date of this song's release there may be more soon Saturn's the sixth planet from the sun with rings that surround my planet system these rings are made of pieces of comets and asteroids or shattered moons my rings you can avoid as of the date of this video I have 82 moons in 1655 my first moon Titan was discovered it's true my largest moon is Titan, the cold and icy orb, with a golden hazy atmosphere you can't ignore. Titan is the second largest moon in the solar system, after Ganymede orbiting Jupiter where it's fun. In the future you will learn more about my moon Titan, when NASA launches the Dragonfly mission. It will launch in 2027 with an eight bladed drone like craft called the Quadcopter making short flights around Titan surface on its path. During the 2.7 year baseline mission, I do confess, Dragonfly will study how far pre-life chemistry may have progressed. Christian Huygens made the discovery of my largest moon named Titan you have seen. Enceladus is the sixth largest moon of Saturn. It's a tenth of the size of Titan, but still present as it turns. There's a global of liquid salty water beneath its crust that jets icy particles into space in which it does gush William Herschel discovered Enceladus my moon in 1789 maybe you will discover more soon here's Prometheus and Pandora they act as shepherds flocking icy particles into a narrow band I'm sure these particles and moons make up my F ring a narrow band which is 60 soon. Compared to Earth's 
Yes, I'm tiny, it's true. I circle the earth and they repeat in corkscrew like trajectory. Never closer than 40 to 100 times the 239,000 mile distance of your moon, you see. I'm odd and this is why I don't reflect brightly in certain infrared frequencies or to the eye like other asteroids do. I'm a quirky satellite and this is true. Because of this, researchers are starting to agree I may be a chip off your known moon flying free. Basically what you're seeing is a flying silicate caused by micrometeorite impacts in the space environment. It's possible when space rocks hit the moon at a high degree. When I was ejected into space, I am lunar debris. I am a near-Earth object also known as Neo, part of a group of near-Earth asteroids called Apollo. I'm an object in a specific type of cold orbital configuration with a planet. I'm called a quasi-satellite. I know it's weird, but I didn't plan it. Earth has a second moon. It's me, provisionally designated. 2016 HO3 Kamul Avrava is thought to be an asteroid, but that may have changed with new facts that we can avoid. My name is J14. 7B, that's me. I have a ring system bigger than Saturn, you see. I orbit a young star, and we can all agree its name is V1400 Centauri. In 2012, when I was discovered by Eric Mamajek at the University of Rochester, I earned the name of Saturn because of my massive system of circumplanetary rings for sure. 90 million kilometers is the radius of my rings. That's about 200 times the size of Saturn's rings, which makes me the king. When I orbit my sun, it takes about a decade, which is estimated at about 3,725 days. I'm within the constellation of Centaurus It's about 434 light years from the Earth But I don't fuss No one knows if I'm a gas giant Or a brown dwarf with rings I'm sure you'll find out more about me While I do my thing There's a gap in my rings Which probably means one thing It may have been made by an exomoon of mine About this I do sing I also have a Another name when I show you, you will see it is 1S Wasp J147B. My name is J1407B, that's me. I have a ring system bigger than Saturn, you see. I orbit a young star, and we can all agree its name is V1400 Centauri. My name is J1407. B, that's me. I have a ring system bigger than Saturn, you see. I orbit a young star, and we can all agree its name is V1400 Centauri. Jupiter and Saturn will come within 0.1 degrees of each other. Forming the first visible double planet in 800 years will clutter on the winter solstice, December 21st in 2020. Look to the night sky to see this event, the joy it'll bring is plenty. Alignments between Jupiter and Saturn are pretty rare, only occurring around once in every 20 years. But this upcoming conjunction's exceptionally rare. Only because of how close we planets will appear. It said the last time this occurred was in medieval times. In the year of 1226 was the closest that we aligned. 
Alignments between these two planets happens once every 20 years. But this conjunction will be very rare because of how close we appear. We'll be aligning on the same day as the winter solstice. On December 21st, 2020, the whole world can witness this. If you live in the northern hemisphere, looking low in the southwestern sky, you can see a shining bright shortly after sunset with the naked eye. We'll appear extremely close for about a month ahead, but we won't make such a close approach again until the year 2400. Typically, Jupiter orbits the sun every 12 years. Saturn's orbit around the sun takes about 30 years. Every couple of decades, Jupiter laps Saturn in flight. Be sure to watch the sky December 21st in 2020 at night. Jupiter and Saturn will come within 0.1 degrees of each other. Forming the first visible double planet in 800 years will clutter. On the winter solstice, December 21st in 2020. Look to the night sky to see this event. The joy it'll bring is plenty. Jupiter and Saturn will come within 0.1 degrees of each other. Forming the first visible double planet in 800 years will clutter. On the winter solstice, December 21st in 2020. Look to the night sky to see this event. The joy it'll bring is plenty. There are 27 moons of planet Uranus We're the 5 largest moons, smallest, 2 largest we trust We're the 5 largest moons of planet Uranus The 7th planet in the solar system, let's not rush I am Miranda, also designated Uranus 5 And the smallest of the innermost 5 round satellites I was discovered by Gerard Kuiper in 19. Discovered at the same time as Ariel by the famous astronomer William Lassell. My surface is the darkest among Uranian moons. I have a lot of impact craters I hope to see more soon. I am the Oberon moon, also called Uranus 4. I'm the outermost major moon of Uranus, that's for sure. I'm the second largest and second most massive of Uranian moons with the like mine to see me is opportune my name's titania designated uranus 3 the largest of uranian moons and eighth in the solar system c 1578 kilometers in diameter i be in 1787 william herschel discovered me there are 27 moons of planet uranus we're the five largest moons, smallest, two largest we trust. We're the five largest moons of planet Uranus. The seventh planet in the solar system, let's not rush. There are 27 moons of planet Uranus. We're the five largest moons, smallest, two largest we trust. We're the five largest moons of planet Uranus. The seventh planet in the solar system, let's not rush. We are the Earth and the Moon And you will learn really soon You can fit the planets in our solar system Between us, this is true We are the Earth and the Moon We meant to tell you for a while The average distance between us We will explain to you with a smile The average distance between the Earth and the Moon is 382,500 kilometers 
Here's the other seven planets Fit between us explaining who they are With some cool features I am Mercury, the first planet from the sun I'm the second hottest planet on my run My average diameter we do know Is 4,879 kilometers At these up as they are shown I am Venus, the hottest planet And the second from the sun I have an average diameter of 12,104 kilometers in the solar system Hi, I am Mars, the fourth planet from the sun You should know I have an average diameter of 6,771 kilometers as I did show My name is Jupiter, the largest planet in from the sun I'm number my average diameter is 139,822 kilometers as I thrive. I'm the planet with the prominent rings, the sixth one called Saturn. My average diameter is 116,464 kilometers while I turn. I am Uranus. I am the seventh planet from the solar system's sun. I have an average diameter of 50,724 kilometers. I'm a frozen one. I am Neptune, the eighth and last planet in the solar system, as far as we know. I have an average diameter of 49,244 kilometers I'm blue as shown Our total planet diameter size When added up is 380,008 kilometers we share We still have 2,492 kilometers of space to spare We are the Earth and the Moon And you will learn It's in our solar system between us. This is true. We are the Earth and the Moon. We meant to tell you for a while. The average distance between us, we will explain to you with a smile. Measured by our radius, you'll hear in a bit 
We'll also tell you the planet in which we orbit. My name is Tethys. I'm one of Saturn's 82 moons. My radius is 531 kilometers. It is true. I am Dion. I orbit Saturn. You do see. My radius is 561 kilometers. That is me. Ariel is my name. Uranus is what I orbit. My radius is 578 kilometers. I'm third on the list. Hi, I'm Umbriel. Uranus is where I'm from. My radius is 584 kilometers. I am spun. I'm the moon of Sharon. I float in orbit. Pluto radius is 606 kilometers. This I do know. I'm Iapetus, a moon of Saturn. Radius of 734 kilometers as I turn. Oberon is my name, outermost moon of Uranus. 761 kilometers is my radius. I am Rhea. Saturn's second largest moon radius of 763 kilometers. See you soon. Here's a moon size comparison in our solar system. We're happy if you shed some light on us until we are done. We're measured by our radius, you'll hear in a bit. We'll also tell you the planet in which we orbit. Not Titania, the largest moon of Uranus. 788 kilometers is my radius. The name is Triton, the largest moon of Neptune. I'm 1,353 kilometers in radius in this tune. Europa is frozen and the moon of Jupiter. My radius is 1,560 kilometers. I am the moon of the planet. My radius is 1737 kilometers for what it's worth. Hello, I'm Io, the strangest moon of Jupiter with a radius of 1821 kilometers. I'm Callisto, I orbit Jupiter, you see. My radius is 2410 kilometers, that's all on me. Titan is my name, Saturn's my claim to fame. 2574 kilometers is my radius, I claim. I'm gonna meet the largest moon in the solar system. Jupiter is what I orbit, yeah, that's where I'm from. My radius is 2634 kilometers now. Let's listen to the chorus while the moons take a bow. Here's a moon size comparison in our solar system We're happy if you shed some light on us until we are done We're measured by our radius, you'll hear in a bit We'll also tell you the planet in which we orbit This is a size comparison of objects in our universe We'll start with the smallest and go to the largest, most well-known objects we know, of course. I am Ceres, I am a dwarf planet. Maki Maki's a dwarf planet as well, but didn't plan it. I am Haumea, a dwarf planet in this group. Pluto is a dwarf, but used to be a planet, it's true. Ceres is a dwarf planet in this mix. Earth's moon is where your eyes are transfixed. Mercury is here, an official planet. I'm the planet of Mars, I'm sure you all know this. I'm planet Venus, my size you may think is large. Planet Earth is next, and the humans think that they're in charge. Neptune's a planet in our solar system, wow. Planet Uranus is here, I wish I could take a bath. Saturn has rings if you think I am big Check out planet Jupiter, I hope you can dig This is a size comparison of objects in our universe We'll start with the smallest and go to the largest Most well-known objects we know of course I am the sun, a yellow dwarf that isn't far I am Sirius A, a main sequence star My name is Pollux, a red giant star, it's true Arctur
Taurus is a red giant star, this I thought you knew. I'm Aldebaran, a red giant star, that's me. Hi, I'm Rigel, a blue white super giant, you see. I am Beetlejuice and I'm a red super giant in class. I'm in Taurus, I'm a red super giant that won't last. VY Ken is Majoris, a red hyper giant star. I'm UI Scootai, the biggest red super giant this far. I am the Milky Way galaxy and you live in me. Now let's all sing the chorus together with glee. This is a size comparison of objects in our universe. We'll start with the smallest and go to the largest, most well-known objects we know, of course. This is a size comparison of objects in our universe. We'll start with the smallest and go to the largest, most well-known objects we know, of course. MK2 to all the world and you. Hello, I'm MK2, a satellite of Maki Maki. I was noticed one year ago, now an official moon I be. In the month of April in 2015 is when I was noticed by Hubble's Whitefield Camera 3. The Southwest Research Institute, led by Mark Boo, we are the first scientists in the world to ever notice me. I'm very hard to see because I'm in the Kuiper Belt And my charcoal colored surface certainly doesn't help As 20, 15, 13, 64, 70 to 1 Is what I was provisionally designated but not much fun They officially nicknamed me with the name MK2 I'll tell you more about me after the chorus you'll hear is through A Maki Maki I have an official new move let me introduce MK2 to all the world and you. Hello, I'm MK2, a satellite of Maki Maki. I was noticed one year ago, now an official moon I be. It's estimated my diameter is 100 miles across. That's an estimate only from a bunch of astronomers. I'm 1300 times more faint than dwarf Maki Maki. When a telescope gets closer, they thousand miles from my door planet so bright and I'm called a moon because I'm a natural satellite Maki Maki had what scientists thought were dark warm spots now they think it was me making those warm dots I'm Maki Maki I have an official new moon let me introduce MK2 to all the world and you hello I'm MK2 a satellite of Maki Maki was noticed one year ago, now an official moon I be. A Maki Maki, I have an official new moon. Let me introduce MK2 to all the world and you. Hello, I'm MK2, a satellite of Maki Maki. I was noticed one year ago, now an official moon I be. the 
Hygieia Minor Planet Designation 10 Hygieia A door planet candidate in the asteroid belt It's nice to meet ya Discovered by Annibale de Gasparisa On the 12th of April in 1849 I did teach ya Discovered at the Astronomical Observatory of Caparamonte is where I was first seen. I'm located in the main asteroid belt between Jupiter and Mars is where I am felt. I do have a diameter of 270 miles or 434 kilometers all the while. I have a mass which is 3% of the total mass of the asteroid belt and the fourth largest asteroid by volume and mass in your system dealt. It's possible I'm a dwarf planet but no one knows for sure. So the IAU has classified me as an asteroid until they're assured. Observations with a very large telescope in 2018 revealed that I'm nearly spherical in which I'm so keen. I have a dark surface when observed from the Earth. This is because of my position in in the outer main belt, of course. I was named Hygieia after the goddess of health, which is a Greek goddess as well as Roman I tell. It takes me 2033 Earth days to orbit the sun at 16.76 kilometers per second. I come as close as 2.79 AU to the sun on my run and reaching as far as 3.49 AU from the sun. I'm 1.78 AU from Earth's orbit at my closest point. There's an extremely wide berth between Hygieia and Earth is my point. Hygieia's small main belt asteroid spectroscopic survey is observed with a 2.4 meter Hiltner telescope primarily. This mass 2 observation indicates I may contain water and iron but wait also nickel ammonia cobalt and nitrogen that's a lot of new information about me for the win my properties are the least known out of the big four objects in the main belt humans have explored I'm an exoplanet orbiting the star, Caro 7 you see, in the constellation of Monoceros, my name is Caro 7B, I was first detected photometrically in 2009, by the French led Caro mission in the month of February. Discovered by a French astrophysicist named Daniel Rowan, working as a director of research emeritus at the CNRS. It's going on. I used to be the smallest exoplanet until the discovery of the exoplanet that was given the name Kepler's. star Caro 7 you see in the constellation of Monoceros my name is Caro 7B when you travel 489 light years from the earth to the constellation of Monoceros you'll find Caro 7B since its birth I am Earth. I was the first 
ass giant for what that is worth. Astronomers watched my host star from Earth and saw a planet in front. No surprise. Measuring this dip in brightness together with my star size estimate allows the calculation of my planet size. After I was discovered and independent, validation was supplied by the Spitzer Space Telescope, which confirmed I am a planet bona fide. My mass is still unconfirmed, but it does range in between two and eight Earth masses. This is all that they have seen. I orbit my star much closer than planet Mercury does to your star. I have a temperature of 1300 to 1800 K. K meet Calvin, the name is bizarre. I'm in Varda here to introduce myself. I have a provisional designation of 2003 MW12. 174567 Varda here to introduce myself. A binary trans Neptunian planetoid from the Kuiper Belt. Discovered on the 21st of June in 2003, I was provisionally designated 2003 MW12UC. The astronomer who discovered me on that day is Jeffrey Larson. Now let's get on our way. I was discovered at the KPNO, which is the Kitt Peak National Observatory. Now you know, the Space Watch Telescope is what they used to see me. One of the major telescopes in the observatory. I was given the name of Varda in 2014 after the creator of the stars and is the Valar Queen. Astronomers found satellite it was named Imarar or Varda 1 on the night it was discovered by Keith S. Noel a planetary astronomer at NASA you should know Imarar was discovered in 2009 on April 26 but I don't know the time not take 313 years to orbit the sun and I will never enter this orbit translates over 114,000 days in November 2096. It's my perihelion state. I'm a certain distance when I orbit the sun. 39.5 AU is my distance at perihelion. 52.7 AU is the distance of my aphelion. That's the furthest I orbit on my run around the sun. A binary trans Neptunian planetoid fell of the hot classical population in the Kuiper belt. I have a diameter of 430 to 500 miles. I'm still debated a dwarf planet all the while. 174567 Varda here to introduce myself. I have a provisional designation of 2003 MW12. 174567 Varda here to introduce myself. A binary trans Neptunian planetoid from the Kuiper belt. My name is T-R-E-S-2-B I'm a gas giant too far away to see I'm the darkest exoplanet ever identified I'm a bit bigger than Jupiter I'll describe With the discovery date of August 21st in 2006 Is when they noticed me at first I was confirmed a planet on September 8th in 2006 officially my birthday i was discovered by an astronomer named francis t o'donovan that is for sure first seen on the transatlantic exoplanet survey or you can call it trez it's an acronym i say this all happened in california you will see at the famous palomar observatory my discovery also took Now, here's more about me. 
My name is T-R-E-S dash to B. I'm a gas giant too far away to see. I'm the darkest exoplanet ever identified. I'm a bit bigger than Jupiter, I'll describe. GSC 03549-02811 is the star that I orbit and a long named one. My parent star is a yellow main sequence star similar to your sun. Just to keep you on par, I belong to a constellation in the far northern sky. Its name is Draco, which is Latin for dragon, I imply. I'm 750. where I'll stay. I'm thought to be the darkest known exoplanet, reflecting less than 1% of any life that does hit. My mass and radius does indicate I'm a gas giant with a ball composition similar to Jupiter, your super giant. I'm likely to be tidally locked to my parent star. I'm extremely dark and completely bizarre. My name is T-R-E-S dash to B. I'm a gas giant too far away to see. I'm the darkest exoplanet ever identified. I'm a bit bigger than Jupiter, I'll describe. Solar planet called Kepler 37b Orbiting Kepler 37 That's my host star you see I was discovered in the month of February In 2013 Now let's learn more about me My discovery site is Kepler Space Observatory On the 20th in the month of February The Kepler Space Telescope did make my discovery Along with two other planets Kepler 37 C and D. To date, I am the smallest planet discovered around a mid sequence star outside the solar system. I am found. I have a radius slightly bigger than your moon, but I'm slightly smaller than Mercury. You've learned this in this tune. I'm classified as an exoplanet, also a sub Earth. This means that I'm substantially less massive than Venus and Earth. I'm an extrasolar planet called Kepler 37b. Orbiting Kepler 37, that's my host star you see. I was discovered in the month of February in 2013. Now let's learn more about me. I do have a diameter of 2400 miles. I'm likely a rocky planet with a solid surface though. I have a surface temperature around 700K. The K does mean Kelvin in the international system of units today. I orbit star it's called kepler 37 here it's similar to your sun as you can see when it did appear i orbit my parent star at 9.3 million miles away with an orbital period every 13 days if you're looking for me in the dark of the night sky you can find me in the constellation lyra please stop by i'm an extrasolar planet called kepler 37b orbiting kepler that's my host star you see I was discovered in the month of February in 2013 now let's learn more about me I'm an extrasolar planet called Kepler 37b orbiting Kepler 37 that's my host star you see I was discovered in the month of February in 2013 now let's learn more about me I am the sun, the center of your solar system. I do erupt intense high energy radiation. This radiation I expel is called the solar flare. You learn about them in this song and why you should care. The sun is a ball of plasma like an extremely hot ocean shaped like a wheel. This plasma is pushed around in shape by the sun's magnetic field. When the sun's plasma swirls around by its magnetic field, it gets twisted and releases energy around sunspots they are real this energy released is caused by magnetic knots when one of these knots breaks it releases solar flares so you are taught solar flares are waves 
of high energy radiation shot through the solar system in which we are all one. These solar flares race through space at the speed of light, creating a solar proton storm. These storms are no delight. When millions of tons of plasma are thrown from the sun's atmosphere, these storms are called coronal mass ejections, as you see right here. These CMEs reach speeds of 5.6 million miles per hour. When they hit Earth, it doesn't hurt living beings even with such power. The Earth's atmosphere protects life from the biggest solar storms by absorbing the impact so beings on the surface are safe from harm. When a CME is too big, it creates a solar superstorm that occur once or twice a century, so you've been warned. If a solar superstorm did happen in this day and age, it would shoot billions of tons of plasma from the sun, I do say. If this type of CME traveled across space towards the Earth, it would reach you in one day. Yeah, that's fast for what that is worth. Its shock wave would compress Earth's magnetic field, making it frail. The two magnetic fields would merge, stretching Earth's field into a thin tail. This stretch tail can't contain this energy anymore. When it snaps, it releases explosive energy towards the Earth that it stored. This creates something very rare called the geomagnetic storm. Normally, no living thing on Earth would even know it had formed. The only thing it would affect is your electricity. Because you rely on this so much, it would disrupt human life, you see. Because Earth is covered in millions of electric wires and transformers, this geomagnetic storm would shut down the power. Humans would be overturned. If one of these storms hit the Earth, electricity and internet would not work. All things powered by electricity would turn off along with all networks. Computers would wouldn't work along with phones and electronic devices, no refrigerators or any other household appliances. Even though we can't stop these terrible solar storms, their nasty side effects can be prevented by how we are warned. Engineers would have a day or two to unplug major power grids until the solar storm passes Earth, preventing blackouts we forbid. Humans need to prepare for these types of storms to prevent being thrown back to the stone age before they form. A cool event humans experience from any solar storm is the aurora borealis at the two poles is where they perform. I'm the life-giving sun, you all need me to live, but I am unpredictable, so solar storms I give. I am the sun, the center of your solar system. I do erupt intense high energy radiation. This radiation I expel is called the solar flare you learn about them in the song and why you should care i am the first planet from our sun you see my name is mercury nothing orbits faster than me the smallest planet with the second hottest degree My name is Mercury, no one is smaller than me Messenger of the gods is what Mercury means The Romans gave me my name, cause I'm the fastest they'd seen A bit bigger I'd be than the Earth's moon that you see To fill the Earth one time, it would take 18 of me I am the first planet from our sun that beams, but I'm the second hottest. I can reach 800 degrees. 88 Earth days is the amount that I take to orbit our sun once. That makes one year on me. I am the first planet from our sun you see. My name is Mercury. Nothing orbits faster than me. The smallest planet with the second hottest degree My name is Mercury No one is smaller than me 59 Earth days equals one day on me My surface is made of stone Covered in craters you see Oxygen, sodium, hydrogen, helium, and potassium Make up my exosphere I have no moons and I have no rings but I'm the second densest planet amongst other things I am the first planet from our sun you see My name is Mercury, nothing orbits faster than me 
The smallest planet with the second hottest degree My name is Mercury, no one is smaller than me Sixty 